Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation. And for today's video, like I've been trying to get out <laughs> for a while now, we're going to be covering the new Frozen videos uh, for today's video. Now I know the video is a little late. I have been meaning to try and get this video out about a day or two ago, but as you are hopefully aware, I had to push it back due to my last video that I really felt the need to take care of, as well as the fact that I also had to spend like a day or two to research about it, mainly just updating the meta section of my website to see which of the metals actually made an impact or such, uh, as well as the fact I also wanted to take some time to even just take a look at kind of like the uh, the beginner side of stuff um, uh, and various other types of players, of course. I know that I may or may not already kind of be known within at least my followers that I am a VIP player, uh, but that doesn't change the fact that I have been a free-to-play pa player before as well, so I'm well aware of the strategies that are involved um, or the thought process as well as like, you know, I am friends with people like Damien and such. So it's like, it's not like I'm not aware <laughs> of the free to play, free to play type of uh, side of things. Um, as well as the fact that I should probably also add, I've mentioned a couple times already in my past couple videos, but um, I have been waning off the, the VIP quite a bit recently these last few months um, to the point where I'm more of a cheap to play player at this point anyways so even though I do get VIP it's more on occasion type of thing now than it is every single week like I used to um, and if anything if Square Enix continues to go down the road that they currently are in terms of like the the VIP banners and stuff like that I'm more than likely going to just be a pure free-to-play uh, going onwards but aside from that, let's jump right into the video. I know if you guys have been waiting. So jumping right into it, we'll quickly go over what each of the medals do. There are five medals in total, starting with Prime Anna. There are three Prime medals. So Prime Anna is a speed upright medal. Tier five costs six gauges, a single target, does four hits, has a seven star multiplier of a 29.45 to a 35.65. And its ability is that it raises your general strength by eight tiers, your speed strength by 12 tiers, and your upright strength by 12 tiers as well. As well as it provides 120% guilt boost, uh, provides plus three counters against enemies with counters, and does more damage the more special attacks used in succession. The other prime metals, which are Kristoff and Olaf, are the exact same thing as Anna, except they affect their power and magic respectively, but are otherwise exactly the same. Uh, Supernova Elsa, which is kind of the biggest metal out right now, is of course a magic upright metal. Tier 8 costs 6 gauges, is AoE, does 3 hits, has a 7 star multiplier of a 29.77 to a 36.89. It raises general strength by 8 tiers, reverse strength by 5 tiers, upright strength by 15 tiers, magic strength by 15 tiers, lowers the enemy's general defense by 8 tiers, and lowers the enemy's magic defense by 15 15 tiers. She also provides a 150% guilt boost, plus three counters against enemies with counters, and does more special attacks used in succession. And it is worth noting that her ability, including the 150% guilt buff, lasts for two turns, which is pretty good for uh, modes like PvP. She is the second medal in the game with a supernova ability that actually has something besides just damage. And so her supernova ability is an AoE supernova as well. For two turns, it will provide a 180% guild buff instead of the usual 150 that she provides normally and does not affect enemy counters. Last but not least, we have the Anna and Elsa medal, which is a speed upright medal. Tier 8 costs 8 gauges, is AoE, does 3 hits, and has a 35.147 star multiplier. And her ability is that she provides a plus 15 general strength buff, plus 15 upright strength buff, and a plus 15 speed strength buff. Now overall, before I start jumping into kind of the nitty gritty type stuff for all the different types of players and my advice and stuff, it is worth noting that every single one of these frozen medals are really good buffer medals at the very least, which of course is going to be fantastic for any beginner players who are just looking to jump into the game and really need something to help them get started. In which case, it doesn't matter what type of medals you have unless you get lucky and get like a Kairi EX Plus, which we will try and not talk about as much except for the meta part of the video uh, where I talk about meta steps and stuff. 
Um, we're gonna try not to talk about it as much just because it's kind of obvious that if you have Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, you don't really need like the prime frozen medals, for example. But anyways, all of the frozen medals are great buffer medals. So first up, let's go ahead and talk about the prime medals for the frozen uh, event, which are going to be prime Olaf, prime Anna, and prime Kristoff. Like I mentioned beforehand, these medals are absolutely fantastic if you happen to be a beginner player. And chances are, for many free-to-play players, these Prime Frozen medals are still going to be very good as well, just because of the fact that, especially if you don't have a Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie just yet, these are going to be the medals that can pretty much work with almost any other Kyrie medal in the game and still be fantastic. Right here, I have a quick example on the Fenrir where even though I am using a normal Kyrie EX Plus, which has been fairly obtainable up to this point so far because we've had multiple reprints of her to mercy her, uh, even with just a Kyrie EX Plus, the Kristoff medal right here pretty much maxes out all of the rest of the buffs needed for this Keyblade. Because of the fact that Kyrie EX Plus along with like, say, the newest Foretellers or even the newest Stained Glass medals have overwrite, they can't go beyond 7 tiers of buffs or debuffs, which helps make the new uh, Frozen medals absolutely fantastic uh, to help cover your tracks if you don't have Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie just yet. The only thing of course that the Prime Frozen medals do not offer or any debuffs at all whatsoever, which is of course going to mean you're going to start needing medals that provide those debuffs, which as I show like right here on Fenrir for example, is where Prime medals like Prime HD King Mickey really come in handy where they can provide the rest of the debuffs for you, or let's say you don't even have the King Mickey, even the old tier 5 Prime medals such as Prime Kingdom Hearts Cloud, uh, Prime Riku vs Roxas, Prime Roxas and Shion, uh, these type of medals, even like Illustrated Roxas, these tier 5 Prime medals, these are going to be the perfect candidates to go alongside with your new uh, Frozen Prime medals as well, just because they will, for the most part, bring out the, mo the rest of the debuffs that you're going to need. You might be a little bit short on the general defense down, uh, but it's only going to be by a small margin that you should be able to easily get that back, either through a copy medal of the uh, tier 5 Prime medal, or through some other type of medal instead that provides general defense down. Kind of like I mentioned before, because the fact that the Prime Frozen medals provide so much buffs, they are absolutely great for buffers. Uh, and even if you, let's say, let's say you're a newer player and you don't have a Kyrie EX Plus, for example, do not worry, because even if you're using the OG uh, 0.2 Kyrie medal that comes in the beginner's banner, uh, you can still use that alongside your Prime Frozen medals uh, and still pretty much get near max buffers for your Keyblade, which is worth noting because as of right now, there are very few medals within the game that don't have overwrite and actually increase your general buffs, uh, strength buffs overall on a large scale. As of right now, those medals would be the old stained glass medals that we received last year, the Scrooge McDuck medal that we received during the DuckTales uh, collaboration event, of course the Kyrie EX and Shion EX medals, as well as a few of the old VIP medals. Now, chances are, you may have noticed that a lot of these medals that I just listed are no longer obtainable, such as the old VIP medals uh, and Scrooge McDuck. Now, it is possible for the old stained glass medals to make a return, but because of the fact that we haven't even seen the newest stained glass medals make a reprint yet, I am not expecting the old stained glass medals to see a return anytime soon, let alone even the OG Kyrie EX or Shion EX for that matter, considering that now that we are literally two Kyries ahead of the OG Kyrie and Shion EX medals, if anything, they'll probably have reprints for Kyrie EX Plus and Shion EX Plus, if anything, instead. So for the most part, if you're not a long-term player and you don't already have a lot of these medals, the Prime Frozen uh, medals are going to be your best bet in terms of the newest and latest uh, really good buffer medals, strength buffer medals that you can use for your setups. And again, this is assuming that you don't have the Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie medal as of just yet. Now, one thing that I do want to point out real quick in terms of every single one of the Frozen medals that is out right now, and I want to quickly thank Ritzbreaker for bringing this up in the comment section because I will admit I did kind of miss this in my initial research until you brought it up, which is the fact that because of the fact 
fact that every single one of the frozen metals has a really high gauge cost associated with it, they are going to require cost reduction skills for every single one of them. However, what I have to say about that as well is the fact that I don't really see that as too much a problem though, just because of the fact that most banners nowadays, most good banners anyways, uh, for that matter, will generally provide a good amount of the like attack boost 5 max and gauge 1 skills alongside the random 7 star medals anyways. That even if you need to, you could always just cannibalize one of those medals onto the new uh, prime frozen metals or any of the frozen metals for that matter in order to make their cost reduction cheaper That kind of just applies to metals in general not typically just the frozen metals per se But because of the fact of how easy it is to get cost reduction uh, skills at this point I don't really see it as really too big of a deal uh, The fact that they cost a lot of gauges just because of how easy it is to make them cheaper of course uh, Now of course they attack boost 5 max and gauge 1 isn't exactly the strongest skill that is at right now but because of the fact that the prime frozen metals are pretty much meant as main buffer metals in the first place it's not really that big of a deal just because they're not really there for damage in the first place they're really there just for their buffers if anything uh, one last thing I do want to point out as well is that the prime frozen metals do have a max multiplier that is equal to the lingering will metal that we currently have in game which uh, as I hope many of you would know, Lingering Will is considered to be one of the strongest tier 5 medals in the game, uh, especially before the Prime Medals came out. Uh, and even with the tier 5 Prime Medals being out, Lingering Will is still considered one of the strongest tier 5 medals in the entire game. So, of course, the new Prime Frozen Medals are also going to be one of the strongest tier 5 Prime Medals in the game as well. Uh, now, for a lot of players, these Prime Medals are going to be considered as an easy pass. But remember, that is only the case if you happen to have the newest Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie Medal, or you don't already have a bunch of those other major strength buffer medals that I had listed uh, beforehand. Now, in terms of the other two Frozen Medals, which are going to be Anon Elsa as well as Supernova Elsa, these two medals, before I talk about their abilities, are currently the strongest AoE damage medals in the entire game, even beating out the newest foretellers that we currently have. If you recall, the newest foretellers did have the highest AoE multipliers in the entire game, making them the strongest AoE medals. But now, because of the fact that we have Anna and Elsa, as well as Supernova Elsa, currently out in the game, they currently are taking the top spots of the strongest AoE damage medals in the game. Not only because of the fact that the old foreteller medals uh, got nerfed because of the plus 15 buff cap and they have to be used for slot 1 now and can't really be used for damage as much as they were, are kind of meant to be, uh, but now they even got nerfed even further because of the fact that there's now actually stronger AoE medals that kind of replaced them. Which is kind of bad enough because of the fact that the, stained, old, the newest stained glass medals are still actually very meta. Uh, which I will talk about in a later video, but the old stained glass medals are still meta even with the newest Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie medal. But anyways, going back to Anna and Elsa and Supernova Elsa, just because of the fact that they both have the highest AoE damage in the entire game, that is automatically going to make them very meta medals, uh, not even taking to, into account their actual abilities themselves. So in terms of their actual abilities, the weakest one, of course, is going to be Anna and Elsa, just because of the fact that she only really provides buffs and that is it. She doesn't provide any other types of abilities. Uh, however, that is something that you shouldn't downplay if you don't have the Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie. You're, you're going to be noticing I'm going to be saying a, a lot of stuff in regards to Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, just because of the fact that that's basically what everyone's comparing uh, these medals to at the moment. But it is worth noting that, of course, if you really wanted to, because of the fact that Anna and Elsa does provide completely max buffs for general strength, speed, and upright, you could very easily, if you wanted to do a speed setup, for instance, you could very easily just pair her uh, with a, say, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku EX Plus medal, copy him once and you pretty much have all of your max buffs and debuffs already filled out for you, in which case you pretty much fill out a, an appropriate Keyblade setup. One thing I do want to point out real quick is that your main focus when creating Keyblade setups is to try and get almost all of your buffs and debuffs maxed out or near maxed out as possible within your first three Keyblade slots if possible. Any further than your uh, 
first three keyboard slots and that should be a sign to you that you're probably not doing enough and you need better metals or a better setup in some way shape or form. Uh, the only people who probably shouldn't worry about this just as much because of the fact they're likely not going to have good enough medals in the first place are going to be brand new beginner players which should be fairly obvious. I do want to mention real quick as well too that in case you happen to be taking a look at my meta tab on my website to check out uh, all of the different meta setups I do want to note that the Anna and Elsa medal will not be included in any of the setups not because of the fact it's not a good medal but only solely because of the fact that as of right now we do not have access to knowing what her strength stat is at the moment which also means that Rosie can't implement it into the tracker website and the tracker website is where I make all of my setups to put in my meta tab and spreadsheets in the first place so without that strength stat I can't accurately uh, document the damage output that the Keyblades are going to be doing which also means that I can't accurately judge uh, the tier brackets of all of the Keyblades for each of the four categories on my on my tab but I do know for a fact that once we get that strength stat I know for a fact she will be uh, on that spreadsheet immediately just because of the fact that she has the highest AOE damage multiplier in the game and I'm pretty sure her strength stat is going to be very similar to the other tier 8 uh, 7 star medals anyways so I'm not really expecting anything bad to happen to her in terms of the meta but I know for sure it's because she's going to be meta uh, in terms of Supernova Elsa, she is, of course, going to be the one medal, especially because of the fact she's the only medal of the five that actually has a Supernova ability attached to her. She is going to definitely be meta in the game, uh, and primarily because of two reasons. Maybe slightly more if you want to be a little technical, but the two main reasons, anyways, why she is going to be meta is because of her guilt buff uh, that she provides both for her normal ability as well as as the supernova ability which both last for two turns i should just point out um, but also because of the fact that obviously she has the highest aoe damage multiplier in the game so the multiplier alone already makes her meta uh, regardless of what her ability is she could be a pure damage metal and she would still be meta just because of her multiplier uh, but because of the fact that she does provide the highest uh, guilt buff in the game as well matching kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, uh, which of course doesn't really make much of a difference if you have kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, uh, but that will make her meta but the real kicker is the supernova buff because of the fact that the 180 percent which is currently the highest uh, outside of the normal ability uh, this is the highest and it does last for tur two turns so in the case of like pvp for example you would use the supernova ability first before any of your other metals activate such as like your slot one metal uh, in which case all of your metals would have 180 percent guilt buff which will carry over into your next keyblade for the next round in PvP. Now another reason why Supernova Elsa is so good, uh, and this one shouldn't really require as much explaining to kind of understand, but it's going to mainly be because of the fact that she provides so much attribute buffs and debuffs uh, that she's very viable as of right now. Even the plus and minus uh, general strength and defense down uh, buffs and debuffs that she provides is very good because because literally if you combine that with say a Ky Kyrie EX plus metal, not only will you actually achieve completely max uh, general strength buffs and general defense down debuffs uh, because you know 7 plus 8 equals 15 but also because of the fact that the Elsa medal will completely max out the magic strength and defense buffs and debuffs as well as max out the upright strength buffs. The main weakness behind every single one of the frozen medals is going to be the fact that they don't really provide any significant debuffs mainly noting upright or reverse debuffs because uh, as of right now out of all of the debuffs in the game the most important that a medal can probably have right now are going to be the upright and reverse debuffs just because the fact is really only a handful of metals that actually provide a significant amount of upright buffs or debuffs uh, that are not overwrite I should add. Aside from Elsa the only actual metals that provide a significant amount of uh, upright or reverse debuffs uh, who also happen to provide a very good amount of other debuffs as well are going to be a good majority of the tier 5 prime medals and pretty much the latest supernova medals aside from elsa um, of course including the kingdom Hearts 3 riku ex plus 
So overall, no matter what type of Kyrie medal that you happen to have in the game, with the new Frozen medals, the new Frozen medals are great and fantastic. Buffer medals to go alongside with pretty much every single uh, Kyrie medal in the game, except possibly the newest Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie. So in terms of whether or not you should actually pull for the frozen medals let's quickly go ahead and talk about the actual banners themselves so the frozen banners of course it's just like with the Kyrie and the black friday deals uh for normal people or non-vip players i should say uh, you only have access to this banner right here, whereas VIP players actually have access to the top banner instead. Now, just to remind you, now just to remind you, for those of you that are VIP players, if you happen to pull from the VIP banner at least five times, you will get a free copy of the Anna and Elsa uh, medal on the 25th of this month, along with one trait medal for every single time you pulled from the VIP banner. As well as, of course, if you happen to pull from the VIP banner 10 times, at, you are guaranteed a Supernova Elsa medal because she's a 10 pull Mercy pull from the fr from the VIP banner ex uh, explicitly. Now, obviously, for everyone else, for the normal banner, you don't have that luxury, and it's basically almost like a normal banner. Uh, for free-to-play players, the banner isn't really anything different from any other type of banner that you've really had in the past, where it would offer uh, guaranteed medals for every single pull, and it would probably have that supernova medal uh, that is non-merciable. For you guys, it should be a no-brainer that you shouldn't trace for the supernova Elsa medal, and of course, the N and Elsa medal doesn't really apply because it's only available for the VIP banner. For the free-to-play players, uh, in Instances or for anybody who didn't get VIP for this week uh, or even for next week if that happens to be the case. What I would say is is that if you already have the Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie medal then you obviously do not need any of the Prime Frozen medals. But because of the fact that the main thing that you really need if you have Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie are going to be debuffer medals for upright and reverse mostly because of the fact that pretty much any tier 4 or higher uh, seven star metal provides at least plus three upright strength buff anyways getting the frozen metals for purely their upright buffs isn't really that big of a deal um, however if you do not have kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, then pulling at maybe like once or twice wouldn't be a bad idea uh, now for everybody else who does not have kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie, if you do not have any of the older uh, really strong strength buffer medals that I had mentioned previously in the video and then pulling once or twice wouldn't be a bad idea for you just because of how good of a buffer these medals are and especially if you are a beginner player then I would highly recommend pulling doing at least one or two pulls from this banner as well. The only thing I have to say about the VIP banner is that depending on how many jewels you have I would recommend taking a quick look at your medals and see which of your medals uh, are actually really good AoE damage medals just because of the fact that people tend to uh, overlook that side of things just because of how preoccupied they tend to be because of the PvP mode of the game. So if you are in need of a really good AoE damage medal, uh, then it's going to be up to you and how many jewels you have and the type of medals you have. Basically, like I would leave it up to your own discretion to possibly pull only five times at most just so that way you can at least get a copy of the Anna and Elsa medal. Maybe hopefully you get lucky and get the Supernova Elsa medal. But even then, I wouldn't recommend sinking uh, 30k jewels to chase the Supernova Elsa medal. If anything, it would be for the Anna and Elsa just because of the fact you want at least like a handful of really good AoE damage medals in the game. Uh, but like I said, that's just going to depend on your own individual situation, how many jewels you have, the type of medals you have, all that good stuff. So overall, despite how meta the Supernova Elsa medal is, just because of the fact of how much jewels you actually have to sink in to get her, I don't really think it's worth that amount of jewels uh, to try to obtain her, both as a VIP player or as a non-VIP player. Uh, the only actual medal that might be worth getting for is only for the VIP players, and that would be the N and Elsa medal, just because of how good of a damage medal it is, and even though it does provide some pretty good buffers as well, just in case. But for anybody else, if you are a beginner player or do not already have a Kingdom Hearts 3 Kyrie medal, then pulling at least a couple times on these banners just to get a couple copies of these really good buffer medals wouldn't be a bad idea. 
But aside from that, if you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It is the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kinemartini Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace, guys.